Hi kids, it's Miss Gigi from Miss Gigi's Brain Time coming to you live from the Agua Hedionda Lagoon Foundation. Today we're going to be reading Pocket Mouse at Crystal Cove, written by Marine Parks Illustrated by Melinda Beavers. Okay, let's see what's inside. Let's see. Ooh, we have a map here of a real beach. Crystal Cove State Park, which is in Laguna Beach, California. Let's see if you... If you've ever been to Laguna Beach, see if you see any familiar places. I see the cultural center right here, the cultural center, the, the visitor center, and of course Pacific Coast Highway where all the cars go. Okay, let's get started. On Crystal Cove Beach lived Little Pocket Mouse. He lived all alone in his cozy beach house. As the sun waved goodbye to each passing day, he watched the stars rise in the vast Milky Way. When the moon gave a nod that the night had begun, he'd kick up his heels for some seed hunting fun. He'd wiggle his whiskers and sniff with his nose, searching for seeds where the wild grass grows. He walked along plants in the coastal sage scrub, smelling lemonade berry and fresh buckwheat scrub. Pocket Mouse loved his California beach home. If I was puzzled whenever he foraged a roam. He see families of bats, brown pelicans, quail, ground squirrels, and coyotes near his hunting trail. Gophers and rabbits burrowed into the ground, but never another pocket mouse had he found. He said to himself, There have to be others. Where are my parents, my sisters, and brothers? On a branch up above was his best friend, Haikyuu an observant owl, so he asked if he knew. Haikyuu said there were pocket mice on the shore, but after the storm, they weren't there anymore. You were too young to remember this storm or how you survived and kept yourself warm. It was a mystery he planned to unravel. He looked for lost clues and possibly travel. The sky had turned dark, his hunt would begin. But this time he searched for signs of his kin. He knew not to venture too far from his home, because mice become prey when they wander and roam. The night beach is filled with danger and peril. He once seen a cat who was fang tooth and feral. But that night he strayed and followed a scent. He thought it might lead to where his family went. It led to the door of the visitor center, but something felt wrong and he waited to enter. He heard something stir. He quickly looked back. Crouch a vile beast was poised to attack. Pointy fangs flashed like those of a bat. Pocket Mouse recognized the fang too, feral cat. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. His heart raced and thumped. He trembled with fear. He had to escape pronto, high gear. He squeezed under the door and soared like a rocket, lighting the safety in a coat with a pocket. The pocket was lush with a salty beach smell, like wild grass seed mixed with blue muscle shell. Pocket Mouse thought, I smelled this before. Then he burrowed his head and started to snore. He awoke to a voice kind and eager to teach kids about tide pools and shells on the beach. Squeals of laughter and joy rang out as she talked about a sea star and the food that it caught. She knew about sea snails and barnacles too. Did she know about mice? Might she have a clue? Had Miss Waters seen other pocket mice? Oh, how he wanted to get her advice. He lifted his head, trying to stay out of view, but he saw her smile and realized she knew. She saw, she saw him hiding, but she looked like a friend. He felt she, she was someone on whom he could depend. His eyes soon adjusted to the striking bright light. The beach in the daytime was a brilliant new sight. The colors were vivid, palm trees green as key lines that swayed in the breeze like musical chimes. he never seen creatures in the tide pool be below. He wanted to meet them and tell them hello. He plunged into the surf but struggled to float. Then bubbles began to rise from his throat. Wildly flailing, he managed, yelp! Then softly he growled, oh, somebody please help! He paddled, he stashed, he battled to swim. Things weren't going well. In fact, they were grim. He couldn't escape. The tide was now surging. The crowd was arrayed and quickly emerging. 
But just as he felt water filling his ears, he heard from the children a chorus of cheers. Miss Waters leaned over and gently retrieved pocket moss from the tide pool, and all were relieved. She held him quite close. He was cold and afraid. Then she told a story like a sweet serenade. The Pacific pocket mice are endangered and rare. Many have vanished like a state's grizzly bear. But this little guy, Pocket Mouse, is his name, persevered and survived when a mighty storm came. He hid in my pocket on the night of the storm. <sighs> He needed shelter and a place to stay warm. Found some mice scurried all over the shore. I'm sure it was Pocket Mouse they were all looking for. When the storm passed and dawn brought us light, I took Pocket Mouse back so they reunite. But their habit had changed. Erosion took place. His family had fled without leaving a trace. They may have moved to a to place safe and new, perhaps to a bluff with a fine ocean view. Pocket Mouse listened to all that she said and believed that his kin were alive and not dead. He planned to find them. He followed their trail with his keen sense of smell. He was sure to prevail. He'd make a compass and map out his route. And when spring arrived, he'd start his pursuit. He heard Miss Waters now speaking again. He'd only been thinking of finding his kin. He perked up his head so that he could hear as she spoke softly in a shivering ear. It was a sad day for me when I let you go to hunt on your own so you thrive and grow. When darkness set in, you forage all night, and each morning I'd see if you were all right. She told him how she watched him, watched him and deeply admired his friendship, his spirit, and how he inspired. She told him of his courage when, he left, when left in the wild. She said that she loved him, and Pocket Mouse smiled. <gasps> the end. Thank you, you guys.